In this video, I'm going to be reviewing these lovely little speakers here, the Q Acoustics Concept 20s. And later on in the video, once I've finished talking to you about the Concept 20s, I'm going to compare them to other speakers I've heard, like the BMW 607, Kef LS 50s, the Q Acoustics 3020i, which is the latest version uh, from Q Acoustics, but maybe the model down from these, and also a Dark Horse. Wharfdale model, which I'll keep secret until later. So what's special about the Q Acoustics Concept 20? Because you just heard me say that the other series, the 2000 and the 3000 series, the 3000 series is the latest one from Q Acoustics, but technically the concepts are a level above. Now, what's the reason for that? Well, funny story, in my previous job as a hi-fi buyer, this was back in 2013, 2014, I actually met with the Q Acoustics team and uh, yeah I remember that meeting very well I was working for a very prestigious uh, retail chain that deals with hi-fi uh, I won't say the name here but yeah that was one of my jobs back in the day in the good old days and uh, yeah I met with these guys and they were trying to get the Q Acoustics concept into the store now my manager told me that I only had one space on the shelf and the space was between a Monitor Audio Silver, which had just been released back then, um, and basically the Q Acoustics concept was the other choice. And unfortunately, yeah, my advice was to go for the, for the Monitor Audio Silvers at the time. So sorry about that, Q Acoustics, if you're watching. Um, hence why I don't want to tell you where I <laughs> used to work, in case anyone starts coming for me. But anyway, so what's so special about this driver? I mean about this speaker here we go right the driver is actually from the old 2000 series q acoustics either the 2000 or 2000 eyes i believe it's the 2000 eyes that the driver comes from but they have partnered this with a different type of cabinet so with this cabinet here very nicely finished by the way um well we have two layers of mdf which is acoustically inert which is why mdf is used but we have two 10 millimeter layers of uh, MDF and in between we have a special glue which they call a gel core and this glue if I remember correctly it never quite sets and uh, if any of you play table tennis another one of the things that uh, I used to competitively play and table tennis there's this thing called speed glue you put it onto a, onto your bat and it helps the ball basically bounce off the bat faster that that glue never quite sets um, so I'm wondering if it's if it's related to that sort of thing uh, but basically what it does is when there is a vibration it heats up right the uh, any vibrations in the cabinet get turned into heat rather than sound and that's the idea behind the cabinet that it's not distorting your audio you see so yeah does it make a difference well I definitely believe it does because I did hear these Back in the day when I was a buyer, I heard these and um, basically I think there was a demonstration between these and the 2020s, the 2020i's, one of those two, I forgot which one now, and there was a clear difference between them. They have dedicated stands, these models. I never got the stands. You're seeing them as I, as I use them now. I've got some stands downstairs, but they're not the Q Acoustics official ones. The difference is obviously, well, they've designed it for it, so that's one difference. And another thing is that they have designed these to screw into the stand. So you, underneath here, you might see, if I'm very careful now, see these bits of rubber here. These are actually screws. They screw into here and the stand would work in the same way. That's a really good move by Q Acoustics. I like when speakers can actually get screwed into stands. I've had some people question me before on this channel about how do you make the speakers not drop, not fall because there's a lot of foot traffic and stuff. So yeah, that's a good move by Q Acoustics there. Now the weight of these, they feel very solid. 5.6 kilos per speaker, which is quite fair considering the compact size. The dimensions, I don't have the dimensions to hand, but you can see it's a very compact speaker. And uh, it's a bit shorter in height than you would expect for a, for a five inch driver. And, um, but it's longer, that's the way they've gone. It's kind of shorter, but it seems a little bit longer. Very nice, uh, very attractive design. I like it in both the black and the white. I think I preferred the black a little bit better from the photos, but knowing me, every time I go for a gloss black finish, it's too much uh, window lean action for me trying to clean up the, the dust and the fingerprints. 
So yeah, gloss white is a lot easier to deal with. And there's a nice kind of like, I think it's anodized aluminium uh, front face plate here. It's really nice, really nice speaker, really lovely speaker really. And uh, at the back we have, oh, you might see I'm plugged in, but at the back we have uh, bi amp support. I'm not bi amping them right now, just uh, standard amplification right now, but very high quality terminals. It's a very nice speaker. The original price of these was actually £379, and uh, hence why I was back in the day making the decision between either these or the Monitor Audio Silvers, which were going for six, seven hundred pounds. Now, in that particular store, the objective was to sell expensive stuff. Q Acoustics is is not really, I wouldn't really say it's, uh, you know, a, a very ostentatious sort of brand. If you get what I'm trying to say, it's uh, it's about value. It's about good product, good value. And uh, that was, I remember the pitch that I was given back then was quite similar to that. So yeah, these were competing with models like the BMW 685, the Monitor Audio Silvers, and the Tannoy Revolutions, if anyone remembers that, the dual concentric revolutions. So these are, are really intended to be a step up from budget speakers, but a very good alternative to the other models from you know the, the big brands like the BMWs and the Monitor Audios and the Kefs and all that. So let's move on to the sound quality. What did I do with these Q Acoustics? Now I've tested them extensively over the last week over on a range of different amps. So the first amp and the main amp that I use uh, and the best amp is the Hypex Encore NC252. And uh, the other amp that I've got right here, I don't know if I could show you, this is, a, this is a desktop amplifier that I'm testing at the moment. This is the SMSL AS, no, it's SA300. And another one, you can't see behind me, there's a hi-fi rack back there and it's got the NAD T955 power amplifier on it. And so that's that. And then I've also tested it on my Yamaha Avantage RX3070, which is kind of like a top of the line AV receiver. It's got fair, it's got good sound quality in, in two channel mode, so, something similar to like a 500 pound amplifier. It's all right. You know, it's not the best. So uh, yeah, of course you would expect that it sounded the best through the Encore amplifier. So that's what I'm going to really comment on right now. In terms of the DAC I used, I used the Topping E30, which is right underneath the camera. I'm not going to pull it because I know it will fall out. Uh, so Topping E30, and that's got the AKM4493 chip inside it. I ran my test with Tidal Hi-Fi, you know, lossless audio. You need to test it with loss, lossless audio to really know. So um, yeah, that's what I can say about that. And where did I listen to these? Well, two locations. I uh, listen to them upstairs. I'm trying to buy be desk speakers, right? So these are intended as my desk speakers right now. I could buy Active Studio monitors, but I'm running a tech channel that focuses a lot on hi-fi. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna buy Active Studio monitors really. Um, I like to tinker with the with the, the amplifier and you know all that sort of stuff. When you go active, you take away that stuff. So yeah, on the desk and downstairs in the living room, when it was connected to the Yamaha AV receiver and it was on stands downstairs. So that's the two locations that I have tested them. Now, what are the differences with either on the desk or versus the stands? Well, on the desk, obviously, it's not gonna sound as good because you're gonna lose out on a bit of sound stage. You're gonna, you're, you're closer to boundaries, so you're gonna get more boundary gain, so more bass interference and stuff like that. So yeah, downstairs it did sound better. These are on foam isolation pads. You probably can't see it here at the moment, but that does improve things a little bit. But these speakers, they have a lack of bass up to about 180 Hertz. They're a little bit under, okay? And I understand there are small drivers, it's a small cabinet, but I've heard other speakers tuned a little bit differently and they, they, they sound better in both locations. So. Yeah, it's only like a couple of decibels difference, like one or two. But for me, that makes a big difference in terms of the overall tonal balance. So yeah, what happens is you tend to get a, a sort of nasally sort of sound when you do that sort of thing, you know, and why, you know, why, why would it be better to have less bass compared to your mids and your trebles? You don't hear like that in real life, so it's not better. It might make certain things sound a bit clearer, but it doesn't sound right. And that's the thing I, I would say is the, is the main weakness of this speaker. If you listen to a cappella music, right, so just a solo singer, let's say, or if you listen to solo instruments, then I would say, yeah, it, they, they do a very good job of get, 
picking out detail and that sort of stuff. But as soon as you start adding more instruments into the mix, it never sounds quite right. And to top it off as well, this tweeter unit, it's a little bit sparkly, it's a little bit on the, on the brighter side. It's not an edgy sounding tweeter, if anyone knows what I mean. Like you've got your metal dome tweeters, they don't always sound, you know, they tend to sound a bit edgier. And I know a lot of people say this is a myth, but from my experience, they tend to sound edgier. They don't always sound brighter, but they're edgier. And that's because they have better frequency response up high and they're able to, you know, the transients are able to come out better with those sorts of um, things. But this is a silk dome. So it's a less edgy sort of sound, but it's still quite bright on these Q acoustic. What was good about these speakers? And to be honest with you, when you hear them in stock mode, I don't think there's anything about them that, it, I don't think there's anything about them that really said to me that they're super, super, super special speakers. Now, some people will disagree with me, but I think that a lot of people really like this speaker because of the design and the and the concept behind it, you know, the, the gel core concept. And yeah, I, I'm finding it very difficult to say something bad about these speakers because I really like them. They're, 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 they're cute, compact little speakers, but when you actually listen to them, there's not really anything really special about these speakers. And, you know, that's just my opinion. But here's the big but. Equalization. Now, there's two people, two types of people in the audiophile hi-fi world. One, the type of people that believe that you should never equalize, you should never do EQ, and the other type of people that believe that you should do EQ. And I'm leaning more towards the latter. Because if you think about it, guys, once the sound leaves the driver, that sound, you're not hearing that. You're hearing the sound of this plus the sound of the room, the acoustics of the room. And that makes a very diff that makes a big difference. That distorts the sound. That is a distortion in itself, you are not hearing the direct sound that came out of the speaker. So yes, I believe equalization does make a huge difference. Don't believe you should go wild doing equalization. And I don't believe you should perform surgery unless you highly, you really know what you're doing with equalization. But if you do have access to digital uh, sound processing with DSP or something like that, then you can really, really transform this speaker like crazy, okay? Now, after equalization, these sounded way more grown up. They sounded much better. The bass was boosted a little bit, okay? And uh, obviously I corrected the nulls out of uh, in the room and uh, the peaks and that. And uh, the speaker was so much better. The voices sounded clearer and everything, you know, the, the mids, you know, there was a uh, there was something underpinning the mids. Not They weren't just floating around. And uh, trebles were turned down very slightly in particular I just have to read my screen because I've made notes here. Between 2,500 and 5,000 hertz needed to be turned down, uh, and between 10,000 hertz and 14,000 hertz had to be turned down as well. And there was another problem in the mids actually, around the 300 hertz to 500 hertz range. They were far too forward compared to um, yeah stock. When they were stock, they were far too forward. So uh, the, rest, the rest of the mids were a bit forward as well, but not like the three, between 300 hertz and 500 hertz. So yeah, that's what I did to kind of get the best out of these speakers. And how did they sound? They sounded so much better in every, jo in every, every genre. In jazz music, you know, with the double bass, for example, when the double bass player plucks the string. On bad systems, you either hear, obviously, no double bass, you barely hear anything. Or if you're hearing too much bass, you don't hear the plucks of the string, you just hear like, like that sort of sound and yeah it, it starts not to sound like jazz music when it sounds like there's a drum machine or something like that or synthesizer in the background so yeah they sounded a lot better with jazz and hip-hop music you know the Q acoustics they really 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 held their own I was quite surprised that the bass lines were present um, only after a little bit of EQ that all the way down to 40 Hertz they were still in command of the bass and um, yeah I, I was very impressed with them and only if you really push them on songs like on uh, there's a song called mask off by future that's when you can hear the cues starting to struggle a little bit but even a floor standard would 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 struggle with that song that, that sort of song needs a subwoofer so yeah by the way if you're still watching just want to say please consider subscribing to the channel this channel is quite new I tried to give my honest advice and ultimately my goal is to try and save people money so like yourselves I don't want you to spend too much on, on hi-fi that you don't need and stuff that's overpriced. So yeah, if you like the video, give it a like. 
And if you want to ask me a question, ask me a question. Don't be shy. Put it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. And yeah, let's move on with the review. With equalization, you are turning up and down specific frequency bands. Okay, now the way I did it was I used a parametric uh, equalizer, which means that I'm able to add in Q factors, which basically allows me to change the bandwidths, or I'll put it simply, change the bandwidths um, of specific ranges so I can kind of hone in the equalization to where I need it to be. So, yeah, I feel like I've done a, a good enough job. You know, I've got experience with equalization anyway. I was very happy with how they turned out. And yeah, to give you an idea of the difference between stock and not stock after the EQ, I've taken this little video of a THX demo. You can watch it now and then you can tell me if you can hear. Take into account I only used a, a Rode shotgun microphone for this test, so it might not be 100% accurate from what you're hearing, but hopefully it gives you some insight. This is with the EQ off. So right, moving on. Q acoustics, equalization. What were the downsides after the equalization? Well, this is not really specifically with the Q acoustics, but the thing is, if you equalize something, you, you, you're going to boost certain frequencies, uh, frequencies, let's say, you have to have a good amplifier. That's one like, quite an important thing. You have to have a, a set of speakers that are able to take the equalization. So the drivers have to be fairly low distortion themselves, but you also need an amplifier that's able to, to do a good job when turned up. So yeah, that's uh, the main issue. Now, my little SMSL <laughs> desktop amplifier, the SA300, it, um, it, it, it couldn't really take the equalization um, settings at when, when it was turned up because they're only, it's an, what is it, an 80 watt amplifier. I think it's 40 watts a channel into four ohm. Okay, so it's, it's not a very powerful amplifier in the first place. So yeah, I could hear some distortion coming through so it was only to test it anyway. In stock, it was even struggling, to be honest with you. But with EQ, that just did it completely. So what actually was very good was the Hypex Encore NC252, which I talked about earlier on. That amplifier does 250 watts into 4 ohms. And these are 6 ohm speakers, I believe. So yeah, with the Encore, way more controlled, way tighter, way better. Um, and uh, with EQ applied, there was no issue at all with the Encore. Um, amplifier that I've got no distortion below 60 Hertz even obviously there will be a bit of distortion but in terms of audible distortion I couldn't really pick out anything to be honest with you so yeah that's that now what's the point of these cues then now the reason I bought them as I mentioned earlier looking for desktop speakers they're also now 229 pounds they used to be 379 so you're saving 150 quid off the standard price now if I were if, if, if I think if you were to buy these stock and, and you don't want to EQ it, you don't want to do any of that sort of stuff, I think really to get the best out of them, you're going to need a subwoofer because, like I said earlier, the way they've been tuned, they're a bit treble heavy and they're a bit bass light. And those two combinate that combination, it's not good for the ears, especially my ears. If you are okay with DSP, I, I think you could get away without a subwoofer. So that's that. Now, we're onto the section now about the value proposition between these Q Acoustics Concept 20s in the year 2021, comparing them to other things that are out there. So I've picked out the BMW 607, the KEF LS50, which you can still buy, the Q Acoustics 3020i, and also the Dark Horse is the Wharfdale Diamond 220. Okay, so this BMW 607, £399, KEF LS50 is about £600, the 3020i is about £219, and the Wharfdale Diamond 220, which is actually, yes, you can still buy it on Amazon. If you go to Amazon, they're about £129. They used to be £250 speakers, those speakers. Okay? Right. So, let's compare these now to the BMW and the KEF LS50. 
Now, are, the, are these as good as those speakers? Well, I'm going to say straight away that they're no match for the LS50s, all right? When it comes to sound quality, the LS50s, while not my favourite speakers, a lot of you on this channel already know I'm not a really real big fan of the LS50s stock anyway. The LS50 is still much more, it's just a better speaker. It's got much better bass, the bass is more refined, there's something to the bass. You know, the treble is more defined, it's better presented. The mid-range is a bit forward on in some places in the LS50. Not a fan of the LS50 mid-range myself, but overall I believe it to be a better speaker. And of course it should be, it used to be £800, now it's £600. Okay, but in your room you might prefer the Q Acoustics. It has a less edgy sort of sound, less fatiguing on the ears compared to the LS50. So, yeah. The B&W 607, again, I think it is the better speaker compared to the Q Acoustics. Better bass for sure, okay? The treble on the 607 is a bit horrible though. It's a bit tinny, it's like a tinny sort of sound. Uh, it suits some music, like pop music, but it doesn't suit other music, especially acoustic music. So, it can sound very unnatural, the BMW 607. So, yeah, I would. what would you buy? Well, what would I buy, sorry? I would buy the Concept 20s over the BMW 607. I do think the 607 is, a, is probably the better speaker, but I would go with the Concept 20s, and if you can EQ it, I think it, it's, it's a better speaker if you do it like that. But if you had to buy one, then I would go for the 607s if you can't do any EQ at all and you don't want a subwoofer or anything like that. So that makes sense to me. And what about the 3020i's, the Q Acoustics 3020i's? Now I know a couple of people who actually have these speakers, some of my friends have these speakers and uh, they're very popular now, the 3020i's. I think that the Q Acoustics, this one, the Concept 20's, they're both Q Acoustics. The Concept 20's, they sound more detailed. There's something more, in terms of the articulation, there's something more when you hear them. But I am willing to bet that the, the majority of the perceived uh, improvement in detail is down to the boost in, in treble that these Concept 20s have because it's, uh, you know, the 3020i's, they're a little bit warmer compared to the Concept 20s directly, at least from what I've heard. So, they're around the same price now. This, these are 229, the Concept 20s are 219. What would I buy? Well, taking into account that I'm fine with the EQ, I'm fine having them on my desk with EQ and sorting everything out, I would go with the Concept 20s over the 30 20Is. But if I had to pick them stock and I wasn't going to pick a subwoofer, then I would go for the 30 20Is over the Concept 20s. Okay? So, that's how I, that's my take on it. I ultimately think this is the better speaker, but it's just good at a very, it's like a narrow range of things. You know, if you want to listen to all kinds of music, then I would, my, my brain tells me not to buy these. Right, and the Dark Horse, the Wharfdale Diamond 220s. Now, the Wharfdale Diamond 220s, they used to be 250 quid. I think in terms of value, you, you can't really beat that speaker. It's got better positioning as well near the walls. You can put them nearer walls that compared to these. These are rear ported. The Diamond 220s have like a downward, uh, like a port firing down and it's on like a special plinth. Um, so these Q Acoustics, they need a little bit more room to breathe. £129 on Amazon. You can't really go wrong with that. They're a little bit brighter now, the 220s, or back in whenever they were made. They're a little bit brighter compared to the traditional Wharfdale warm sound like the 9.1s um the, the diamond 9.1s so yeah i think the q acoustics is little maybe a little bit better in certain areas of the frequency spectrum but overall i would say that the wharfdale is the better speaker for most people in stock and i keep saying this in stock in stock i just don't think these are that great but you know when you eq then it, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit harder. Take into account the Wolfdale's £129. It really depends. It depends on you, to be honest with you. I'd still go with the Q Acoustics Concept 20s over the Wolfdale's myself, because the extra 100 quid, I think it would probably be worth it in my case. So, yeah, the other thing is the design, I believe, it on the Q Acoustics is a bit higher quality. That's solid. Solid, you know? solid speaker so yeah not that makes a huge amount of difference but 
you know, it's just nice, isn't it, to have something higher quality. Anywho, that's the end of the review. Like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.